Man's greatest investment is towards his future, and few understand this as well as Hugh Morton. Despite being an affluent businessman, Morton could very easily stand upon his success and rest on his laurels. However, this is not the case. Mr. Morton devoted his time, his effort, and his money towards saving the environment and building a better future for the ecosystem. At the age of 14, Hugh Morton became a camp counselor at a nature camp in his hometown. Ever since he was asked to teach a photography class at camp, he expressed his love for creating images. As he became older, he became a successful businessman. He started out in business and then became involved in public service. Morton once stated, I feel as if it is an obligation of all successful businessmen to render public service and I am delighted to do it. He then started to show his devotion for the environment. Hugh Morton is most famous today for the environmental preservation of the piece of land that was inherited to him from his grandfather, who bought the 15,750 acres from the town of Lenore. Once his grandfather became ill, the three grandchildren inherited the land and split it up equally. While the other two grandchildren wanted the flat land for easier development, Hugh Morton wanted the 500 acres, which was not flat. In fact, it was a mountain. This mountain, which is named Grandfather Mountain, is now one of the most visited tourist attractions in North Carolina. When he first acquired the mountain, he discovered that the dirt road which led to the top made it far too difficult to climb up, so he first built walking trails. Then, over time, he built a paved bridge that people would be able to drive up. This bridge, also known as the Blue Ridge Parkway, started to become very popular. People would come and pay a nickel to drive up it and enjoy the magnificent views of North Carolina. After a while, Morton noticed that it was becoming more and more difficult to view the Charlotte skyline, and the forests on the mountain peaks were starting to die off. After some research, Hugh Morton's theory for this was air pollution and acid rain. This was causing a black cloud to form over the mountain peaks. He started to increase the public's knowledge on the subject. However, many people did not listen to him. Hugh Morton said, You can show dead trees on the top of mountains all you want to, but unless you relate it to human health, no one will listen to you. In the early 1900s, Morton noticed the increase of the size of the black cloud that was drifting into North Carolina which was caused by the 13 coal-burning plants in the Tennessee Valley. This black cloud continued to increase and caused damage to the trees and wildlife of North Carolina's natural forests. Hugh Morton couldn't watch this black cloud continue to harm the environment, so he decided to take charge. He and Robert Brook, an NC State plant pathology and forest professor, decided to learn more about how the black cloud was affecting the forests and streams. He then created a documentary on the pollution and how it affected the earth and human health. He called it The Search for Clean Air, which was aired on UNC TV. This documentary influenced the Clean Smokestacks Bill, which deeply cut harmful emissions from the state's 14 coal-fired power plants and was passed by the 2002 General Assembly. During the late 1980s, a developer had plans on building a ski resort and shopping center on 900 acres 
on the Wilmore Tract between Grandfather and Sugar Mountains. Hugh Morton and several local residents, including Nature Conservancies, were angered about these plans and decided to take action. After many proposals made by both the Nature Conservancy and the developers, Morton came up with a plan. This plan gave the developers 100 acres, while the remaining 800 acres went to the Nature Conservancy, which is what took place in the early 1990s. This ended debates between Lineville residents and the developers, and showed Morton's commitment to his community. Hugh Morton's actions led him to many awards, such as the Outstanding Conservationist Award, presented by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 1996. On that occasion, Morton said, I am just having a good time. I never aspire to any awards. Once Morton became affiliated and familiar with the area, Governor Hunt made Morton chairman of the Blue Ridge Mountains. His first call of action was to get more of a right-of-way for the Blue Ridge Parkway because the developers were moving in too close. Because of this, he soon later set up a conservation trust for North Carolina, which is still going on to this day. This conservation trust has saved over 30,000 acres. Morton's dedication to the environment also shows in his Save the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse Committee. Gary Govert, the writer of an article in the magazine, Carolina Lifestyle, once stated, Now Morton is taking on both a skeptical press and the entire Atlantic Ocean in an attempt to save the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. With his determination, he was able to raise $500,000 for his campaign, which was enough to save the lighthouse. Because of this action, many people call him the Keeper of the Light. Mountains symbolize strength, and these qualities can be prominently seen in Grandfather Mountain. The legacy of Hugh Morton is immortalized in the Grand Peak that towers over the North Carolina landscape. However, his legacy extends farther than the wistful summit, for the accomplishments of Mr. Morton have impacted the future greatly. My biggest reward, he once stated, comes when I see a group of school children sit around a Mildred field. Hugh Morton's actions have spoken louder than his words, and for this, Hugh Morton shall forever be remembered, both for his actions and for his legacy.